UK for our start today's emulation station and retro watch setup guide. If you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it really helps out my channel too. So today we're taking a look at adding retro watch to emulation station desktop edition. Now, why would you want retro watch? Well, retro watch covers a huge portion of systems through emulation station. So around 80, maybe 85% of systems such as Mega Drive, PlayStation 1, PC Engine and many more are all powered by RetroWatch. So we're going to want to put RetroWatch in to cover all of those game systems. So what we're going to need to do first is download the latest version of RetroWatch. Now I need to download the portable for this so I'm going to download the 64 bit of this. Now I've already downloaded this and it's on my desktop. When you download this, it will likely download in a zip folder. What you need to do is just extract it. So in many cases, just right click on the zip folder and then just extract it and you'll end up with a folder. If we go into this folder, you're gonna find subfolders, lots of .dll files. What we need to do is actually download some cores, which are essentially micro emulators. That's how I put them anyway. So what we need to do first off is open up the emulation station desktop edition directory, and we're gonna drag in that RetroArch folder. Okay, so once we've done that, we now need to open up RetroArch outside of ESDE. If we just scroll down, we're gonna open it up with RetroArch.exe. It's going to open up in a window mode, so first things first, we need to turn this into a full screen mode every time we open it. Otherwise, if we open this through ESDE, your games are going to display in window mode, which is pretty annoying. So I'm going to press down on my D-pad, go across and down to video. I'm going to go to full screen mode and press A on my Xbox button to enable start in full screen mode. And here we go, if I press my B button now, which is gonna take us out and out again. So let's download some cores. So for this guide, I'm gonna be setting up Nintendo NES, and I'm also gonna be setting up something a little bit more complex, but fairly simple anyways, which is Sony PlayStation 1. To do this, I need to go to main menu. I'm gonna go across using my D-pad and press A on my Xbox controller to online updater. I'm gonna press A on core downloader, and that's gonna fetch us all of the cores. Now, if you're not using a Windows version of RetroArch, it could be unlikely that you'll see many of these cores like I can see here because I'm using the Windows version. So what we're going to do then is download a couple of these cores. And first of all, I'm gonna download a Nintendo NES core. So if we just go down to the Nintendo section and just remember everything's in alphabetical order. Uh, we got several different options for Nintendo NES in this case. I'm gonna go for Nestopia UE. If I press A, core, it's now been installed, so that's cool. Next thing we're gonna to need to download is a core for Sony PlayStation 1. So I'm gonna to continue to scroll down until we we'll get to the Sony section. And here we go. So for this, I'm gonna use the Beetle PSX core. Again, press A. That's now been downloaded and installed, so it's all ready to go. I always suggest just going down to configuration file and saving the current configuration so it doesn't lose anything. We're then going to go down to quit. Okay, so that's all the tough bits out of the way now. And what we're going to do is go into the system folder next. Now, your BIOS files go into this system folder. So I'm going to need a few BIOS files to power my PlayStation games. If I just drag and drop those inside of the system folder, very easy stuff. Okay, next thing we need to do then is obviously put our games into the correct folder. So, in the emulation station directory, my folder where I put my games are in the ROMs underscore all folder. So it might be different in your case. So what I need to do from here is obviously drag and drop my games. So I'm gonna to go to the NES folder. And in NES, I'm gonna drag my NES game inside. Now, in each one of these folders, you'll have a system info.txt document. If you open this one up, it'll tell you the file extensions which are supported. And here we go. So supported file extensions for Nintendo NES. We can see everything just here, including .zip, which is what I've got, so that should work fine. And next up, I need to drag and drop my PlayStation game into the PSX or PS1 folder. So I'm gonna just scroll down, PSX, and again, system info.txt. 
we can see supported file extensions here. Now, my game is in a .chd file extension, so that's fine in this case. So I just need to drag and drop that one inside the ROMs or PS exporter. And that's about it. So next up, we need to open up esde.exe. And here we go then. So we've got Nintendo Entertainment System and we also got PlayStation. If we go into Nintendo, let's scrape some artwork actually for both of these games. So main menu by pressing start, scraper, scrape these systems. And I'm going to scrape for both Nintendo NES and Sony PlayStation and simply go down to start. Okay, successfully scraped. So let's take a look. Here we go. Now, what we need to do, if your game doesn't boot up with the RetroArch Core, it's normally a case of opening up the main menu and going down to other settings, alternative emulators. Okay, so we can see alternative emulators just here. If I go into the NES, what I'm going to do is select NES Topia UE because that's the core which I've just downloaded in RetroArch. If you don't do this, then your game won't play. So just make sure you're selecting the correct one. And under PSX... This looks like it's going to work fine with the default of Beetle PSX. So we'll look at that one in a minute, but let's open up the NES game first. And here we go, straight in. Okay, so to exit that, obviously you can use your hotkeys, or in my case, I'm using the F1 button on my keyboard. This will bring open Quick Menu RetroArch, or if I press Xbox button on my controller, that's also going to bring me to the screen, depending on which your hotkeys are assigned to. So we can close content from here, and if I just go down to Quit, and here we go. So let's check out PlayStation. Okay, and again, to exit the game, obviously just use your hotkeys or we can quit it through RetroArch. And that's it for Emulation Station and how to set up RetroWatch today. So I've added a very basic system such as NES, which obviously doesn't require a BIOS ball or BIOS balls. And I've also covered a system which does need BIOS balls, which is obviously the PlayStation 1. Fairly simple setup guide and there's a ton more stuff you can actually do with RetroWatch. Now, if you're interested in adding bezels, decorations, how to save and load games with RetroWatch, I'll leave links in my description for this video, and that'll give you an in-depth guide how to use RetroWatch correctly. Anyways, check out my Emulation Station playlist for lots more Emulation Station setup guides. I'll leave that pinned in my comment section. If you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.